good afternoon to you all. I heartily welcome to you all for the advanced mathematics two session. I hope it is very difficult to handle the session after the meals. I hope I may not bore you. So, my name is Dr. S. S. Benchali, working as an associate professor in Basweshwar HDA College, Bagalkot. So, friends, I am going to handle uh, the following topics, so namely vector algebra and solid geometry. And I am going to cover in vector algebra, what do you mean by an vector and how do we add two vectors, how do we multiply two vectors and what is the uh, meaning of dot and cross product, triple products, vector differentiation, velocity, acceleration of a vector point function. And in geometry, I am going to discuss about a straight lines, angle between the lines. Friends, uh, before uh, defining a vector or addition of vector, multiplication of vector and what do you mean by dot and cross products, etcetera, etcetera. So, we want to think about uh, why we want to study a vector algebra. Is it clear? Or you may ask a question like this, why do we bother with vector algebra? Is it clear? And what are the advantages of vector algebra? Is it clear? So, we have to ask such a, of, such a type of questions on ourselves. Then we have to answer for these questions. Then we can uh, define uh, how do we define vector uh, mathematically. Is it clear? Right? So, first uh, we can say that or we can compare vector algebra with the previous topics. Previous topics means in the previous class we have studied some uh, topics, namely uh, we have studied algebra or we have studied arithmetic. So, we can compare vector algebra with the previous topics, is it clear? Right? So, learning vector algebra represents an important step in students ability to solve problems. It means uh, we have studied some topics in the uh, previous class, say for example, we have studied arithmetic. Right? So, with the help of arithmetic, we are able to solve some real world problems. It means that we cannot solve all real world problems, we are able to solve some problems. With the help of vector algebra, we want to solve some more real world problems. Right? The importance of vector algebra can be understood in the context of previous steps in knowledge. It means, so we have studied some topics, it means that we have gained some knowledge with the help of previous topics, you can add one more step to that knowledge. Is it clear? Right? So, at some point, usually in previous classes, at some point means usually in previous classes, students are taught basic algebra, because the mathematics they have no up to the point. Arithmetic cannot solve most real world problem, just I have mentioned no. For example, uh, a student may be asked to find the speed required to travel 33 miles in 60 minutes, right. So, you assume that it is a problem, we have asked us to solve this problem. What is the problem? 33 miles can be covered in 60 minutes. So, how do we solve this problem? How do we solve this problem means we have to apply some mathematics, then we have to think what type of mathematics can we apply to solve this problem. Right? So, you can apply uh, many methods to solve this equation, then you have to identify the, the most simplest and most easiest method to solve this problem. So, that is important. Is it clear? Right? So, during high school students begin to realize that even algebra cannot solve problems that incorporate two dimensional space. So, they learn trigonometry and geometry. Right? It means that suppose if you want to solve a two dimensional space problems with the help of arithmetic, with the help of algebra, so we cannot solve a two dimensional problems. So, for that reason we have studied trigonometry and geometry. 
For example, if a student was trying to find the amount of concrete needed to fill a cone shaped hole, right? simple algebra alone will be of little help. It means that suppose if I want to fill a cone, right? what I want to fill a concrete or I want to fill a ice cream. Is it clear? So, we are, all, we are familiar with a, a cone ice cream. Suppose a cone shape is there, I want to fill the ice cream. So, this is the problem. How do we solve this problem? Is it clear? So, if you want to solve this problem, we need the help of trigonometry as well as geometry along with the algebra. Is it clear? Right? So, however, geometry and trigonometry are very difficult to apply in many situations. That's clear. Vector algebra was invented in order to solve two dimensional and three dimensional problems without the use of cumbersome geometry. So, just now I have mentioned cone problem can be solved with the help of trigonometry and geometry. In many situations, so it is difficult to apply trigonometry and geometry. In such a situation, why can't we go for factor algebra? It means you can think: Is it possible to solve such a type of problems using factor algebra? If it is possible, if it is easier one, then why can't we select a factor algebra to tackle such a type of problems? So that's why uh, we want to use or we want to study a factor algebra to handle such a type of problems. Right. Although it is possible to use ordinary trigonometry and geometry to solve most of a physics problems, we are uh, likely to encounter. Factor algebra has some significant advantages. As clear. So, along with those two topics, those two means as I have mentioned uh, earlier, trigonometry and geometry, right? We can use factor algebra. Uh, better advantages. Then you may ask, so what are those uh, advantages? Right? So, vector algebra is much easier to apply the than geometry, uh, right? Geometry and requires knowledge of fewer rules. Is it clear? Right? The mechanics of vector algebra are straightforward, requiring a less institution and cleverness in finding a solution. Suppose if you tackle mechanics or if you want to solve a um, problem in mechanics, then instead of using other topics, we can use factor algebra. It means, by using factors very easily, we can find out the solution. Is it clear? That is the meaning. So, vector algebra operations are much easier to express with familiar nomenclature. So, it means that, suppose if you want to write a statement like x is equal to x plus y. Right? So, we are already familiar with the statement like this x is equal to x plus y or you can add any term left hand side as well as a right hand side. So, like that in vector also we can write a statement like c is equal to a plus b. c is equal to a plus b is what? c is one vector, a is another vector, b is a vector. So, you can write down a statement like this and it is a typical vector algebra expression right such a type of operations can be made in vector algebra right so many of the rules learned in basic algebra so we have studied so many operations in algebra addition subtraction multiplication division is it clear in the similar way so we can apply in vector algebra means the same operations can be applied in vector algebra for example we can add the same vector to both sides of an equation. We can divide both sides of an equation by a number and so on. Is it clear? So, these are the advantages of a, uh, vector algebra. Is it clear? Then you may ask, okay, uh, we feel that uh, it is a very simple topic. Instead of uh, using trigonometry and other topics, uh, better we can learn vector Factor, uh, factor or vector algebra and we can apply the vector algebra. Then you may ask, okay, what do you mean by a vector? Because we do not know the meaning of a vector. Is it clear? Then how can we, without knowing the meaning of a vector, how can we solve a real world problem? Is it clear? Good. Right? So, now I want to uh, 
explain the meaning of a factor. So, before explaining the meaning of a factor, I want to go to the history of the factor. As it clear? Actually, what is the meaning of uh, the uh, word factor? As it clear? The word factor has been derived from a, a Latin word factus, V E C T U S, right, which means to carry. Is it clear? So, this is the meaning of the word factor. Right. So, the germinal ideas of modern factor theory date from around 1800 when Capser Vessel between 1745 and 1818 and John uh, Robert Argand 1768 to 1822 described the how a complex number A plus I B could be given a geometric interpretation with the help of a directed line segment in a coordinate plane. Friends, we are already familiar with a complex number, right. What is the complex number or how do we represent a complex number? We will write a complex number in the form of A plus I B or we will write X plus I Y, where X is what? X is the, we say that X is a real part and Y is the imaginary part as clear or suppose if I write a plus i b. So, a is the real part b is the imaginary part as clear right. So, now we want to represent a plus i b as a directed line segment. So, that we will come to know from uh, these uh, scientists right. So, William uh, sorry William uh, Rowan Hamilton uh, between 1805 to 1865 an Irish mathematician was the first to use the term factor right for a directed line segment right in his book lectures on quaternions in 1853 right. So, the idea of factor concept and their addition was known much earlier ever since the time of Aristotle 384 to 322 before Chris right. A Greek a philosopher and pupils of a Plato 427 to 348 BC right. That time it was supposed to known to be that the combined action of two or more forces could be seen by adding them according to the parallelogram law. Is it clear? Suppose if you apply two force on any body, is it clear? How do we find out? or how do we represent a resultant of two force means how do we represent means how do we represent mathematically as a clear right. The current sorry the correct law for the composition of forces that forces add factorially right had been discovered in the case of perpendicular forces by Stephen Simon in between 1548 to 1620. In the 1880, right? So Gibbs, 1839 to 1903, an American physicist and mathematician, and Oliver Havisides, 1850 to 1925. I hope you may heard the word uh, Oliver Havisides, as okay. So because uh, you are already uh, familiar with the Laplace transform, right? So his contribution to factor algebra, an English engineer created uh, what? we now know as a factor analysis as a clear right essentially by separating the real part and imaginary part as a just now I have mentioned when we consider a number like x plus i y or a plus i b and we call it as an it is a complex number right a is called the real number and b is called the imaginary number right. So, we call it as an A as a scalar, B as an factor part, scalar part and factor part. In uh, 1881 and 1884, Gibbs printed uh, entitled uh, elements of factor analysis. This book gave a systematic concise account of factors. However, much of the credit for uh, demonstrating the applications of uh, factors uh, is due to the habicides and Tate in between 1831 1901, who contrib uh, contributed significantly to this uh, subject. Is it clear? So, it means uh, just now we have gone through the history of a factors. Is it clear? All right? So, then you may ask. 
So, what is the uh, meaning of a vector or how do we define a vector? Is it clear? So, before defining a vector, I want to tackle one day to day problem. Is it clear? Right? Suppose you assume that uh, you were given the job as a weather man for national television station. Right? You would like to convey to your audience the wind speed and directions in their area. Is it clear? And how they compare to other areas. Is it clear? Right? So, first you could try write down the speed and direction of the wind at various locations on the map. Say for example, you are planning to show this map. Is it clear? Right? I hope you can observe right. So, various numbers is it clear 18 miles per hour what is the wind speed in other states say for example, in Rajasthan 23 miles per hour is it clear 22 miles per hour right. So, 45 miles per hour is it clear I hope you can observe so many numbers in so many states is it clear right. Say for example, audience observing this picture as a clear right. So, they for example, uh, for example, they want to move from one state to another state they wanted to know the what is the wind speed in Rajasthan or in Jammu Kashmir or in any other state of our country is it clear right. So, can we tell me can we uh, able to recognize the wind speed in uh, any one of the state is it clear right. So, you can think or you can say that uh, the viewer is going to have a measurable time it means they need more time to understand that diagram right. So, uh, the he will need very good eyesight as a clear and patience most importantly such a system is insufficient for detecting general trends in the wind direction right and speed as a clear right. So, I will go back to the same picture just by observing these numbers. So, we cannot find out the general trend of the map, general trend of the country, general trend in any one state because I have to note down or we have to note down all these numbers and we have to calculate general trend is it clear and that is not possible immediately is it clear. So, if you want to do like that actually what we want to do the viewer has to write down all the data for each location and they have to study it as clear is it a good I hope it is not a good system as clear. Then what we want to do right. So, I want to improve the same problem then how do we improve the same problem I want to make a small modification in the problem. So, how do you modify the problem right. So, I have an idea is to indicate the direction of the wind as an arrow right while writing the wind speed next to the arrow as a clear. Now, the viewer can compare the directions of the wind easily right with the other allocations ok. We have made some improvement in the problem then we are going to telecast the map like this as a clear just you can observe right. So, you can observe the arrows right. So, 18 uh, miles per hour along with the arrow in Himachal Pradesh 16 miles per hour with an arrow as a clear right 34 hours miles per hour with an arrow as a clear right. So, can we tell me from this map is it possible to find out the general trend of the country means wind speed as well as a direction again it is not possible to calculate right wind speed and direction means general trend of the country is it clear. So, why once again we have to observe all the data and arrows is it clear. So, it is not possible to uh, calculate a general trend is it clear because some of the arrows may correspond to more bridges other to pull down gales right. Therefore, such a system is usually misleading because numbers alone do not provide the necessary usual cues establish general trends 
in wind speed then you may ask us then how do we uh, make a general trend is it clear or what we want to uh, make an improvement is it clear right then you can think about the factor why can't we use the factors to modify the same problem or to improve uh, this problem yes i want to use the uh, factor idea is it clear right so is there a way that we can incorporate both aspects of wind speed and direction right with a simple system answer is yes make the length of the arrow corresponds to the speed of the wind with the system right long arrows corresponds to high winds so on is it clear so if there is a high wind then you can show a long arrow is it clear if there is a low wind then you can show a short arrow is it clear right so now the viewer can tell which direction the wind is blowing right in his area with a quick glance furthermore the viewer can tell how the wind speed in his area compares with the other areas is it clear right so i hope now you can observe the map you can observe the uh, windows uh, sorry wind direction uh, long arrows right short arrows right just by observing these arrows you can say that uh, so wind speed and uh, direction so when we compare with the uh, map you can say that uh, in the north india so you can observe uh, heavy wind uh, speed and uh, direction comparatively uh, comparatively uh, south india as it clear so that can be observed right so it means that uh, so once the arrow indicates both magnitude of some sort as it clear some sort means in this case uh, the speed of the wind as it clear magnitude means the speed of the wind and the direction uh, um, speed of the wind and the direction is called a vector right it means an arrow may contain magnitude as well as a direction right so a directed line segment may contain magnitude as well as a direction such type of uh, line segment you may call it as an vector as it clear the vector in this example is a velocity vector as it clear i think still we have not discussed about the velocity vector because first we want to discuss about uh, vector algebra as it clear then uh, in the later stage you will come to know how do we define a velocity vector and how do we calculate a velocity as it clear right the length of the arrow which responds the magnitude as it clear on the basis of the length of the arrow you can find out the magnitude of the velocity is called the speed it means uh, speed can be calculated direction can be calculated how we will calculate it, uh, all those things mathematically so we will come to know is it clear so friends uh, now we have discussed uh, a problem with uh, different uh, angles is it clear right then you may ask just by observing the previous uh, map uh, is it possible to calculate uh, uh, speed and uh, direction of a wind as clear again frankly speaking it is not possible just by observing arrow is it possible to calculate speed is it possible to calculate direction as clear i hope you may uh, come to know the direction but how do we calculate direction as clear right it requires a lot of things once again you have to note down the data once again you have to refer the data then you have to make some calculations then only we are able to calculate all those things but by observing that diagram we will come to know the direction or we will come to know the trend as it clear trend of the speed and direction that can be noted down as it clear right so now uh, we want to define a vector algebra we want to define a vector as it clear right so before defining a vector right as i have mentioned vector means magnitude and direction i wanted to categorize something something means i want to do explain what do you mean by a scalar because i have used the word scalar i have used the word vector what do you mean by a vector sometimes i said that a is called a, a scalar b is called a vector is it clear actually how do we categorize those things 
right. So, for that reason I wanted to use one more uh, day to day uh, life examples, is it clear, right. So, sometimes uh, we come across many queries such as uh, we will ask what is your height or sometimes you will ask what is your weight or sometimes you will ask how should a football player hit the ball to give a pass to another player of his team, is it clear, right. Then we have to answer for these questions. So, first question is what is your height, is it clear, observe that a possible answer to the first query may be uh, 1.6 meters, someone may say that 1.6, 1.2 or 1.67 etcetera, is it clear, right. A query that involves only one value, is it clear, right, namely magnitude which is a real number, such quantities are called scalars, is it clear, you can write down a number, right, 5, 6, 7, 8, etcetera, right, so all those numbers or all real numbers, so you may call it as an scalars. Friends, I hope now you are able to define or you are able to understand the meaning of scalars, is it clear, right. So, now we have to answer for the second question, right, however, an answer to the second query is a quantity, right, sometimes you call it as a force, right, which involves muscular strength, is it clear, you want to hit the ball, you want to hit the football, is it clear, right. So, muscular strength means it is a magnitude and so we want to give the particular direction, you want to pass a ball from one person to another person, is it clear, in which another player is positioned right, such quantities are called factors, is it clear, right. So, magnitude as well as a direction, right, then that implies you may call it as an, it is a factor, right. So, in mathematics, physics and engineering, we frequently come across with both type of quantities, namely scalar quantities as well as factor quantities. Scalar quantities means say for example, we are using length, is it clear? Say for example, if you want to measure the length of the room, is it clear, right? Then we have used the word mass, we have used the word time, distance, speed, area, volume, temperature, work, money, voltage, density, resistance, etcetera. Right. So, all these quantities you may call it as an scalar quantities, is it clear, right. And we have used along with these things, we have used some more quantities, is it clear, right. Then you may ask what type of quantities we are already familiar with, is it clear. A quantity is like displacement, is it clear, velocity, acceleration, right, force, weight, momentum, electric field intensity, is it clear, right. So, we have used these quantities, etcetera, right. These quantities, so you may call it as an factors, is it clear, right. I hope, so now you are able to recognize factors as well as scalars, is it clear. Then, now you want to define a factor geometrically or you want to represent a factor geometrically. Then you may ask, okay, now we are able to understand the meaning of scalars the meaning of factors, is it clear, we are able to define a factor, then we want to come to know how do we represent a factor as geometrically, is it clear, right. So, let L be the straight line, you can draw a an infinite straight line, you may call it as an L or you may denote an infinite straight line with the help of any letter, is it clear, right. Here I have denoted by using the letter L, so L represents a, a straight line in a plane, it may be on two dimensions or it may be on three dimensions, is it clear, right. So, this line can be given two directions, right. So, by means of arrow heads, is it clear, I hope you are observing the diagram, is it clear. A line with one of these directions presented is called a directed line, right. So, it is an infinite line it can be represented by L, you can uh, represent a directed line, uh, red line is it clear? with a direction or we can denote a line segment uh, using this direction, is it clear? or you can uh, denote 
red line or line segment AB. Here AB is the line segment with a particular direction. It can be denoted by L. Right? Then you may uh, call it as an a directed line segment. It means that uh, is a segment say AB of an infinite straight line. Here dotted line is an infinite straight line, right? Which has got a particular direction. I hope you can ask, uh, you can observe the direction of the line segment, say from A to B, is it clear, right? From A to B, as shown in the diagram, right? Then you may ask, what do you mean by A? What do you mean by B? Is it clear? Here uh, you may call A as an initial point, is it clear? And B is an terminal point. Right. Then you may ask what about infinite line, is it clear? This diagram containing infinite line also, is it clear? The infinite straight line is a line of support, you may call it as a line of support. Thus, a directed line segment whose initial point is A, whose terminal point is B denoted by AB. How do you denote? So, you can denote like this. A, B on the head you can show a, a line segment, sorry a directed line, is it clear? Has a length and a direction, it means that this line segment has a magnitude and direction or length and direction, is it clear? Hence, a directed line segment can be used to denote a factor. So, now how do you denote a factor? Geometrically, you can use a line segment or directed line segment, is it clear? Thus, A B is a factor, then modulus of A B represents its length. Just now, I have asked one question, how do we calculate length of an directed line segment? You can use this formula, is it clear? Or this represents a length or magnitude or sometimes we call it as a modulus, is it clear? Or sometimes, we can use uh, a single letters to represent a factors, is it clear? Arrow A, you can write on A, on the head you can write on arrow, is it clear? Or B or C, is it clear? Or sometimes uh, we will use bold letters, small bold letters A, B, C, D, etc., right, to represent uh, a factors, is it clear? Friends, I hope now you are able to recognize vectors, scalars, and you can represent uh, factors and you can calculate uh, length of a factor, is it clear? Right? Simply, you can write on modulus of A, modulus of A, all these factors denotes their lengths, is it clear? Right? Then you may ask, so mathematically how do you define uh, a vector, is it clear? Right? So, you can define a quantity that has magnitude as well as a direction is called a factor. The arrow indicates the direction of the factor, is it clear? Right? And here you can note the one thing, since the length is never a negative, is it clear? Length of the factor never be a negative, right? Or the notation you can write in modulus of A is less than a 0, it has a no meaning, is it clear? This should be noted down, right? So, okay, now you are able to define a factor, right? So many types of factors are there, is it clear? Right? So, one is a 0 factor, then you may ask another one is a uh, unit vector. So, what do you mean by a 0 vector or how do we define a unit vector or how do we define addition of two vectors? Sometimes we call it as an uh, these two vectors are equal, sometimes we call it as an uh, co initial vectors, is it clear? Right? So, you want to define one by one, is it clear? Right? So, first one is uh, we call it as an 0 vector, right? Then you may ask what do you mean by a 0 vector? A vector whose initial and terminal points coincide is called a 0 vector, is it clear? Or sometimes we call it as a null vector, right? So, how do you denote by a null vector or a 0 vector using O with an arrow end, is it clear? So, 0 vector cannot be assigned a definite direction as it has 0 magnitude or alternatively otherwise it may be regarded as having any direction, this should be noted, is it clear, right? So, in the similar way you can define a unit vector, a vector whose magnitude is unity, 
unity means 1 or 1 unit is it clear it is called a unit factor in the direction of a, a given factor is it clear. So, A is the given factor and is denoted by A hat is it clear it is understood that suppose if you write A hat it is a unit factor is it clear right. So, in the similar way you can define a co initial factor right. So, how do you define a co initial factor two or more factors having the same initial point are called co initial factors is it clear. So, what is the initial point? So, 0 is the initial point right. So, you can draw a one line segment here O p is one factor O q is another factor O r is another factor. So, like that you can define a few more factors is it clear you observe all the factors all the three factors. So, what is the uh, initial point of the factor O p O what is the initial point of the factor O q again O what is the initial point of the factor O r again O is it clear. So, it means initial point is same in that case. So, you may call these factors are called a co initial factors right ok. So, now in the similar way you can define collinear factors sometimes we call two or more factors as a collinear or sometimes we will give two factors we will ask you to prove that these two factors or given two factors are collinear is it clear right. So, in that case we should know the definition uh, when we said that two factors are collinear is it clear right. So, two or more factors are said to be collinear if they are parallel to the same line irrespective of their magnitude and direction is it clear right. So, for example, you can observe so A B is the factor means A B is one factor C D is another factor is it clear right. So, these two factors satisfies the above definition therefore, A B and C D are collinear factors in the similar way you can write down few more factors on the same infinite line as it clear right all the factors may be collinear right. So, sometimes we said that two factors are equal how do you say that two factors are equal is it clear right. So, if they have the same length right the same direction and third one is the same or parallel line of support in that case you may call those factors are equal is it clear. For example, so A B is one factor C D is another factor E F is a third factor is it clear all these factors are equal. How do you say that these factors are equal because the length is same direction is same is it clear same or parallel line of supports is it clear. So, that is why we call these factors as equal factors is it clear right. <coughs> negative of a factor sometimes we say that uh, factor is a negative of the given factor. How do we define consider a factor A B is it clear you can take a line segment A B here A B is a factor the factor B A it means B A is another factor is it clear whose magnitude is same as that of A B you can compare these two diagrams right. So, magnitude of these two diagrams means length is same is it clear. But what about the direction? Direction of A B is towards this, direction of B A is opposite, is it clear? Right? Whose direction is opposite to that of A B. So, that is why is called the negative of A B and is denoted by minus times of A B. How do you denote it by? Along with a negative sign, we have to write A B, is it clear? Or sometimes you can write like this B A. So, B A is the factor that is equal to minus times of A B is it clear. So, like that you can denote a negative of a factor is it clear. It means friends we have studied some basic definitions is it clear right. So, my plan is why cannot we apply the gained knowledge to solve a real world problem is it clear right. So, for that reason I want to consider a small real world problem 
is it clear? Right? Say for example, you want to represent graphically a displacement of 40 kilometer, is it clear? 30 degree west of south, is it clear? Right? Say for example, all of us are familiar with uh, planes uh, uh, will move from one city to another city, is it clear? They have to recognize uh, a city A to city B how they will move from city A to city B, you will come to know later, is it clear? This problem is uh, concerned to that one only, is it clear? I repeat the same problem once again, you want to represent graphically, what do you want to represent? A displacement, right? So, what is the distance? 40 kilometer, is it clear? What is the angle? 30 degree west of south, how do we represent? Is it clear? Right? So, I hope you can observe right uh, sides as clear. This line uh, represents uh, east west, E means east, W means west, N uh, stands for north, S stands for south as clear. Right? So, now we want to uh, represent uh, a distance uh, 40 kilometer as clear. The line OP it has uh, length as well as a uh, direction and you may call it as an, it is a vector, OP represents the required displacement, because we have mentioned the scale also, is it clear? So, one segment O2 from this point, you may call it as an 10 kilometer, 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, I hope the line OP represents 40 kilometers, that is the uh, length of the line OP, is it clear? And uh, you can make an angle 30 degree, is it clear? According to the uh, problem, right? 30 degree west of south, they have mentioned, it. is it clear? So, west of south, right? And this is the solution for the problem or uh, such type of uh, things can be uh, represented uh, graphically, is it clear? Right? So, okay. So, now I want to consider uh, one more uh, simple example. Here, uh, they have given uh, things. It means, you want to classify the following measures as scalars and factors, is it clear? They have given some items, 5 seconds, 1000 centimeter cube, 10 newton, 30 kilometer per hour, is it clear? 10 gram centimeter cube, 20 miles per hour towards north, right? So, they have given some items, now you want to classify whether uh, these things are belongs to scalars, belongs to factors or belongs to any one of those two, is it clear? So, they have given first one is 5 seconds, right? So, 5 seconds is a time, right? You may call it as an, it is a scalar, is it clear, right? And second one they have given 1000 centimeter cube, is it clear, right? Say for example, uh, we, when we will use centimeter cube, you will know that centimeter cube is a unit. Suppose, if I ask you to find out the volume of a particular cube, is it clear? Or the volume of a room, is it clear? You will find out the some number and how do we use the number in centimeter cube, is it clear? Or in meter cube, right? So, it means that number represents a volume, right? So, volume is a scalar, right? And they are given uh, 10 Newton. Right? Suppose, if you want to apply some force, is it clear? Newton is a force, 10 Newton is a force and it is a, it has a magnitude and a direction, is it clear? Say for example, I want to move a particular item, right? This pen from one place to another place, is it clear? I have to apply the force on the pen, is it clear? Right? So, uh, force means it has a magnitude as well as a direction, that is why you may call it as an, it is a vector. Is it clear? And uh, next one is a uh, 30 kilometer per hour, it is a distance, it is a distance means you, you can say that it is a speed, speed is a, we know that speed is a scalar, is it clear? Right? And similarly, 10 gram centimeter cube is a density and again it is a scalar, do you feel, do you, uh, feel that it has a direction, right? So, I think it is a scalar only, it may not be a density, may not be a factor. Right? And last one is 20 meter per second towards the north, is it clear? Again it is a velocity, just now we have solved one 
such type of example it has a magnitude as well as a direction it means it has length as well as a direction that is why you may call it as an it is a factor is it clear. I hope now you are able to categorize whether is it an scalar or factor is it clear. So, next example is similar to the previous example in this case I have considered a particular diagram and it is that diagram containing factors is it clear. So, now you have to identify collinear factors you have to identify equal factors and you have to identify co-initial factors from the diagram is it clear and they have given a scale is 1 unit right. So, this line represents factor A and this line represents factor B and this line represents factor C and this line represents factor D right. So, this diagram containing 4 factors right. So, now I have to identify how many factors are collinear as clear just now we have observed the definition of a collinear right it means you know the meaning of a collinear can you recognize collinear factors as clear so yes you may say that a and c and d are the collinear factors as clear a c and d are the collinear factors as clear right similarly are you able to recognize equal factors as clear automatically you can say that a and c are the equal factors why because length of a and length of c are same direction is also same that's why a and c are equal factors as clear and similarly so you can say that uh, co initial factors means you can identify the co initial factors what are the co initial factors so b c d b c d are the co initial factors right so how do we say that b c d are co initial factors right so what is the initial point of b so this point is the initial point what is the initial point of c this point is the initial point what is the initial point of d this point is the initial point it means initial point of three factors namely b c d is same so that's why these three factors namely b c d are uh, co initial factors is it clear right so uh, now in the similar way you can represent a displacement of a particular matter 30 degree east of north just now we have solved now uh, this example is also similar to that example we can represent a displacement particular matter 30 degree east of north as clear now, as usual so w represents west e represents east n stands for north s stands for south as clear right so in this figure the factor op distance is 40 km again scale is 10 km right for unit represents the required displacement 1 2 3 4 unit so it, it represents 40 km right so we want to move 30 kilometer east of north as clear right so you can leave or you can uh, measure 30 degree then you can write a line op right so this represents the above statement right so you can consider a similar type of example they have given one more example you can observe the uh, diagram once again we have to identify how many co initial factors are there how many equal factors are there how many collinear but not equal factors are there as clear right factors a and d are co initial right this line represents a factor a right so this line represents factor b right factor c and factor d you can say that a and d are co initial right why because the point is the same as it that is why these two are co initial factors factors b and d are equal as clear factors b and d are equal how do you say that these two factors are equal because we have observed the length of d length of d right direction of b direction of d are same length and direction of b and 
uh, d are same that is why we can say that these two factors are equal is it clear right. Factors A and C are collinear right factors A and C are collinear these two are collinear means parallel right. So, but not equal is it clear why these two are not equal you can observe the factor A is it clear and factor C. So, direction of A and C are opposite right the direction of A is this direction the direction of C is this direction these two are uh, moving in a opposite direction that is why are not equal is it clear. So, friends I hope you can recognize equal factors collinear factors is it clear right. So, sometimes if they give or two or three factors how do we add those factors is it clear. So, we will come to know a variety of uh, mathematical operations can be performed is it clear in algebra how do we add two numbers how do we subtract uh, two numbers is it clear we are already familiar with uh, all those uh, things right. In the similar way if they give two vectors how do we add those two vectors how do we subtract uh, those two vectors is it clear right. So, two vectors can be added together to determine the resultant or result observe the following summations of two force factors is it clear right. So, they are given phi u plus phi u phi here phi u represents a force of this factor again phi u represents a force of this factor right. How we will add phi u plus phi u in the similar way you can add 10 is it clear 10 is a force represents this factor is it clear or phi u plus of minus phi u if we add how we will add in algebra phi u plus of minus phi u I hope you will get 0 is it clear sometimes may be like this phi u plus minus 10 is it clear phi u plus minus 10 I hope you will get minus phi u is it clear or sometimes may be like this 10 plus of minus phi u is equal to phi u is it clear it is as good as addition of two numbers in algebra is it clear. So, friends we have right from beginning we have studied uh, or we have discussed about basic definitions of factor algebra how we are going to uh, define a factor what is the history of a factor is it clear right and how do we define a variety of factors and how do we add two factors is it clear we have discussed all these things is it clear right. In the next period uh, mathematically how do we add two factors is it clear how do we multiply a factor by a scalar. So, we shall discuss all those things in the next class. So, thank you, thank you very much.